Hi, in this video I'm just going to go through the process for importing a model, uh, an XML type model from Revit uh, into the IES software and then what we're going to do is have a run through on the process involved in getting some daylight factor images from the model. So first thing we need to do is to import the GBXML file. So up to file, import GBXML and now that file would have originally come from Revit, it would have been exported from Revit into that format. So we need to uh, come over to here to import. We now get a window popping up giving us the option to browse for the file. And I've put one onto the desktop here. And the file I'm going to use is called Andy Solar Study, so it's an XML type file. So click on that and then click on open. We have to give the project a name, so I'll just I'll keep with the project title from the land XML or the uh, GBM Excel file and uh, go OK. OK, so I can overwrite it. I've already got one there with that name, so I can overwrite that. It's no problem. Now you will get a couple of checks that you need to have a look at first of all before it imports. So you get a preview of it coming up here. And as you can see it's a much more basic model than how it looked in Revit. Uh, so we need to go down here to step one, check the model. So the software will analyze uh, the geometry and pick up any areas that might be a little bit unusual. And here it's picked up um, values outside the expected boundary. So you'd expect the floor and ceiling ratio to be the same, uh, where the floor area and the ceiling area are identical. So all this is telling us here is that the, the uh, ceiling and floor are not the same size. And that's fine, you know, it, depending on the model, uh, that may be the case. So we can just close that down, no big deal. And then you check this little box down here to say I have checked the model is suitable for analysis and go OK. And go OK again. And that's the, land, the I keep calling it the land XML, the GBXML file brought in. To look at it in a different view, that's it, we're looking at it in plan view there at the moment, uh, we just need to come up to the drop down menu for the views. So we've got plan at the moment. And if we click to axiometric, uh, we get uh, what we would probably call more like a, an isometric type view. Okay, so that's the drawing brought in. We can look at the model viewer by clicking on the pair of binoculars up here. And it just gives us a graphical representation of the room itself. Now it's a very simplified model, as you can see. Okay, so we need to go back to plan view. So click on the binoculars and we need to now bring in daylight. Now the daylight is worked by the module that's called Radiance. So you come over here to your application browser, come down to Radiance and do a click. And we've got all kinds of different settings down here. Now the most straightforward one to use is uh, making sure that the sky you're using is what you what you want. Okay, so standard CIE sky will, will, will do for, for now. But there are different options you can pick. You can set the date here, and you can set the time like that. Um, what do we want to view? Do we want a perspective view, or do we want a plan view? Well, the default one is plan. It's coming up as perspective here, but the default one is normally plan. So we click on plan like that. Um, surface properties will probably have come in in the XML file from Revit, but if there are any type of uh, reflection, data for reflection parameters that you want to set, you can set them on there as well. Uh, but we'll keep it all as per the Revit file without doing any changes. So come back to images here now and we'll go with the medium quality. Uh, this is a bit like rendering. The higher you go, the longer it's going to take, but the better quality the image will be. And normally uh, the working plane is where you would set your view and then come down to simulate. Oops, I need to select the room over here. So on my project uh, navigator, turn off all the options apart from room. And then over here on your browser, or sorry, in your drawing space, click on the room. When it's selected, it will go red like that. And now it should work if we click on simulate. 
Now this can take a couple of minutes. You'll see a progress bar coming across the bottom here. I'll let you see how it looks and I'll just pause the video until that has completed. That can take a few minutes. Okay, so that uh, progress has almost completed here now and in total it has taken about three minutes to get to this point. In the pro in the middle of that uh, I did get an error message coming up saying the ap application had to close uh, but when I clicked on the little uh, X button, uh, close button on the warning sign, the simulation kept on going. So it did work even though it said that it wasn't going to work. So this is the typical type of picture you will get now from the working plane uh, diagram uh, from the simulation. So uh, you can see as I move the mouse around, down on the uh, left hand bottom corner, you'll see some numbers coming up and de the default unit it uses uh, is Lux. So as I move the mouse around you can see the Lux uh, dropping as I move it into a dark area and if I move it back to a bright area the Lux is going right the way back up to about 300-ish there. Uh, if you want to change the unit from Lux to Daylight Factor you come up to Illuminance, down to Units and click on Daylight Factor. Now the image won't change but the units down the bottom left hand corner will change. One of the things that's handy with this is to actually map onto it the areas that have the below the threshold level. So if we have a look at this button here, uh, we can set our minimum daylight factor as 2, which would be kind of a standard. If, if your daylight factor drops below 2, you would have to be thinking about using artificial lighting. Uh, click on Apply, and you get a green area Oops, you get a green area over your uh, picture showing you all the parts of the room that have a daylight factor less than 2. And you can see up here it's about 74% of the room has less than 2 daylight factor. So that will tell you at that instance, remember this picture we're looking at here is an instance. We told it, uh, a date and a time before we hit simulate. So at that time of the year, on that date, uh, we would have uh, quite a significant area of that room requiring artificial lighting. Okay, and we can have a look at the contouring options. So we can have a scale going from uh, 0 up to 10 daylight factor. And we'll use uh, contour bands. And we'll go OK and see how it looks. And it will give us a kind of a contour map showing the variation in daylight factor across the working plane. So you can see here we've got um, areas in here that have less than one and then we've got areas here that have one. I'm getting these colors from over here. Certain areas in here have three and five and even a couple of areas in here where we've got a daylight factor around seven. So we can have a look at one more option on here we look at false color and click on OK. Uh, this gives us maybe a, a better representation where you can see uh, the full gradient across the whole room. Now up here in the top left hand side what's visible here uh, with quite a high daylight factor is actually the reveal of the door. So that's really outside. That red stripe up there is outside the room. So that's uh, it's called false color um, and it might give you uh, maybe an arguably more uh, useful way of representing what the daylight factor I I is behaving like in the room. So we'll close that down for a second. And we'll close that down as well. So I'll just do one more thing here. I'll just show you what it looks like from a perspective view. So we need to go into um, the sky tab down here. Now just to get the um, to change the view from plan to perspective view uh, you need to go to the Sky Eye tab, as I said, but I actually had to exit out of Radiance just now and come back into it. So if that happens to you, what we want to do is change this button here from Plan to Perspective. But if that button is greyed out and you can't select it, just come up here and go into one of the different modules, something like Vista or Vista Pro, it doesn't really matter, and then uh, come back into Radiance again. And this option should be here. So we'll click on Perspective. And you're given a kind of a preview here. The arrow is telling you the direction of your line of sight, and the green circle here is telling you where your eye would be. And we can go back to um, 
the medium quality again and we go back to working plane and if we click on simulate now again we should see um, the progress bar coming across and this again is going to take a few minutes so I'm going to pause the video and come back to you when it's almost complete so I've just turned the microphone back on and you as you can see progress is almost 100% across the way uh, in total that has taken maybe three minutes to get to this point here so we'll see now when this gets uh, completed we will get a new view appearing in here which will be a perspective view okay so you can see that there's a perspective view on the screen now and uh, one of the settings that you need to be aware of is that when you click on the perspective view you must be in the illuminance function here uh, when I tried this a few minutes ago I was in the illuminance working plane and with the working plane settings you won't get a perspective view like this so you need to follow the procedure as I gave it uh, a few minutes ago but make sure you've got the illuminance button clicked on here first of all and you will, you will end up with a drawing that looks a bit like this now it's very blurry and blobby and that's because of the settings I used are set to medium if that was set to uh, slightly higher quality or even the best quality the visualization of the room will be far clearer uh, but again you can look at some uh, analysis of it here by clicking on the, the mapping buttons at the top and you will get a similar type of thing as you got in the plan view but this time actually on the walls as opposed to just being on the working plane okay so that's a quick run through on how to look at mapping the daylight factor either on a working plane or on a perspective view using the radiance package of IES